Hey, 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 welcome into another episode of Halos in the Infield, the podcast with your host, Todd Fox. And what is up, you pieces of trash? It's Courtney. <laughs> wow, you sure have a way with the fans. Yes, they love me. I hope. <laughs> yeah, actually, we got to address that issue. <laughs> Hi, guys. It's Fernando. These guys are keeping me awake at 1230 on the East Coast. That is a trooper right there. Yeah, he's a, a freaking trooper. trooper. Yeah. So I'm sitting here. I'm probably not going to be very jolly today. Oh. <laughs> I'm going to look like Artie most of the show. Yeah. <laughs> Just pissed off. Like. <laughs> He's mad at me, too. Yeah. But it is late here on the West Coast, too. It's 930 at, the, at this moment. So, yeah, 1230 over there. You're being a trooper. But we're going to get into the Detroit series which uh, just ended today, this afternoon, which will was probably the best games of the series. And then we're going to look ahead to the series with the uh, Cleveland Spider, I mean, Guardians, or I mean, Indians, whatever they're calling themselves these days. And then uh, I have a little few tidbits uh, in between. And one thing, if you're a fan of the page, I have to say this. I said this on my post-game show today. I have to say this again today for uh, for our, our listeners here, here on the podcast who haven't heard. AM830 has a, uh, uh, you know, Roger Lodge, obviously, who we – all know is a cheesy guy and also a terrible host, but he had a really special connection with his um, a producer, which was James Allen. And James Allen was actually, uh, you know, a, a good guy. And I, we had nothing but respect for him. The only thing we did when I, or I, when I did my impersonations was I would use Roger's voice because he always got too animated when he t called out to James to play a clip. He'd be like, James. And then he, you know, play the clip. But James, unfortunately passed away last night. Uh, due to due to COVID uh, complications, so I just wanted to give a personal shout out from the page from Halos and Infield for everybody. Our condolences. Anytime anyone passes away, uh, it sucks. But in the Angels family, we're giving special shout out to James Allen. So I just want to say RIP to him and his family. Yeah, yeah. No, I, de I all respect for James. I never had anything against James. Always a nice guy. Every time I've ever talked to him for those wonderful Halo Honk tickets in the field level seats, uh, he was always very pleasant to talk to. Uh, always a nice guy. So you know, all love on this side. Uh, our condolences to the Allen family. Uh, I'm sure the GoFundMe page is out there if you guys want to go ahead and support his family. Thanks for mentioning that, Courtney. Yeah, my condolences to the family. Um, and really anybody affected by COVID-19 or any complications. Um, it, it's still kind of a weird time for everybody. Um, but definitely may he rest in peace and, you know, respects to his family. Thank you. Thank you very much. So uh, who wants to... Rest in peace of James joke. You're going to have to find his new producer. I think it's like right now it's Alejandro Diaz or whatever. Uh, Alejandro, Ali, Alejandro, Ali, Alejandro. Oh, that's going to that's gonna kill my freaking throat, dude. Yeah. Pause. <laughs> that's going to kill it, man. So, yeah, I got to work on a Gaga song. I got to work on my show. <laughs> oh, man. Why couldn't you pick an easier uh, fill in for him? Jeez. Oh, well, remember, Alejandro was just their producer, or was their producing engineer. So, at some point, they have to get a producer to the stars. Mm, there you go. There you go. Yeah. Okay. So, we'll see. Well, again, our condolences go out. So thank you so much for your uh, your words there, guys. And uh, let's start with the uh, Detroit series, game one, okay? Because there are still some rally Chris's out there that want this team to still stay in contention and believe that they are still in contention. Before we get into the series, what say you before we knew the outcome with Detroit? Uh, was this is, – is this a turning point? Are they, are they still flirting with it? Are you guys still throwing in the white towel? Because you know my answer already. White towel. I'm still throwing in the white towel. Um, but the one thing that I do want to, I guess, address is mm -hmm. the emotion and energy that has come from our younger players. Mm -hmm. I think that is something that is that we've been needing. Um, you know, even when we, we, you know, we seen it today, we were down, and then all of a sudden we came back. You seen the emotion. You know, these these younger guys care, and they still want to scrap. They still want to not give up. So um, I'm still throwing in the white towel, at least for postseason, but I do like what the younger players have been giving to us so far. I just don't think it's enough. Agreed. Fernando? Uh, yeah, I'm basically on the same boat. I mean, I don't, I, I'm really not even looking at the standings anymore as far as playoffs, but um, uh, my whole hope has been for the last like, couple of weeks, and I think I've been on record saying this several times, that I just want these young guys, hey, hey, cover up the, the logo. No Sorry. free ads. 
No free ads. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I just want to get to the point where these young guys can get some experience and some big games, they need to make clutch situations, you know, having competitive ball games at the end of September. You know, we're not going to make the playoffs, but if you can have a we're going to make the playoffs mentality, that's all that matters because if you can even be in a situation where you play yourself into the last couple of games, mm-hmm. you know what? At the end of the day, to me, that's worth something. Not because these aging you know, raggedy old veterans figured it out. Like last year where it came down to like the last three games, Mm -hmm. you know, it's young guys who have something to prove by showing that, Hey, we can get us to the promised land. We didn't have enough time this year, but you guys wait till next year. Yeah. I I like that. Those are good points guys. Cause uh, I mean, we've been seeing uninspired baseball, at least hitting wise the last two weeks, they've kind of, or, or prior, and, and but what we've seen lately, like what Courtney said, you're seeing more passion, you're seeing more camaraderie, like Fernando's saying, the team's more exciting. So yes, I think that's that is the goal right now. I'm with you too as well. I'm not looking at the standings. I'm not. I'm not thinking there's still hope. I I, I just like I said, like you guys said perfectly. Let's just make a nice little push. Went take one game at a time, and let's feel the excitement, ride some momentum. Yeah, I mean, the one, the most halo honk thing I will say is that, you know, it isn't over until we're mathematically limited. Like mm-hmm. the old saying goes, it's not over until the fat lady six. Mm-hmm. You know, has she cleared her throat a couple times theoretically? Yes, she has. But she's yet to bail out Justin Bieber. Right? <laughs> Whatever the kids listen to. Well, she's definitely not Bieber. Uncle, Uncle Todd's the DJ. <laughs> oh, jeez. <laughs> Oh no! That means all the kids will be off the dance floor if I'm the DJ. I'd be like, "What the hell <laughs> is he playing?" Play Mumbo Number Five. Oh God, yeah. no, no! I hate that song. I hate that. A song. little bit of Courtney in my life, a little bit of Rally Chris all night. Oh, oh. no! Oh no! <laughs> can we end the show now? Of... Yeah, we can. Good night. I'm gonna hit edit on that. <laughs> so yes, Detroit. Yes, Detroit. Uh, what what happened in game one? First, uh, fuck free world 313. That's what happened. I'm just... <laughs> oh, first of all, I need everybody to apologize for the Lord Bunday slander while we're doing the prediction. Because you guys are like, no, he's going to blow chunks. Todd, you said that. He's going to blow chunks. But no. You, know you said that he was going to uh, blow chunks too. You said he was going to win, but he was going to throw up. <laughs> no, I didn't. No. Yes, you did. No, I didn't. Todd, roll it back. I'm sorry. Yeah. Todd? Todd. <laughs> Todd, Todd, roll it back. Play the clip of Bundy, Todd. I know but, for sure uh, I said he was going to throw up after he gave it the Miguel Cabrera home run to James. Like, he's going to do it in the first inning. Exactly. Like, no, you guys had so much Lord Bundy slander, and I'm not here for it anymore. I have confidence in him. And I think, and I think game one, you know, I think he gave him a little bit more confidence. So I think every, you know, since we put him back into the starting rotation, mm-hmm. he's getting a little bit more confident every time he's going out. You know, he's going a little bit longer. You know, he's not giving up as many as he was, you know, of course, at the beginning of the year. So, um, I mean, really, I think, you know, the first game was a good win for him. Let's not discount the fact that he faced the Rangers and now the Tigers. I'm not, I'm not sitting here picking on Bundy. At the end of the day, dubs are dubs. Mm-hmm. You know, wins are wins for the people who might not be hip with the lingo. But, you know, he faced the Texas Rangers. They're not exactly taking the world by storm. And like I said, he just faced Detroit, who is also not taking the world by storm. Granted, their records was almost identical to ours prior to the, se- uh, the series. But at the end of the day, we could all admit that on paper, we have a much more talented team than the Tigers. We've just been facing a lot of bad luck and injuries. Yeah, I think the predictions last video, and that's a good point, Fernando. Uh, the prediction video, I, I think I went over in this series. Like I was predicting Miggy was going to go deep on uh, Otani for his 500th. I think that was my big, uh, you know. I think we all agreed with that, though. I think we were all like, yeah, yeah, I could see that happening. But but no, I, he, <laughs> that didn't happen. But you, but Bundy, you got the right, and I think you, Fernando, you got the Suzuki one right, right? Yes, yeah, yeah. yeah so I did. The, yeah, that, that, that was a stretch. That one was more unbelievable than Otani giving up the home run. I was like, are you sure, Fernando? <laughs> but he called it. It bad almost. I was like, are you serious again? Because he did that. I think he said that, what, for the Rangers series? He was like, no, I said that for the twin series when I predicted yeah. that Andrew Heaney was going to have a great game also. And you guys were like, oh, okay. And I was like, he's going to hit a home run that game too. 
yeah. and you guys were like, no. Exactly. Yeah, you guys, you guys have been dead on. You guys have been dead on. I'll give you that. Yeah, I like sure. Todd. That's why he does post game. <laughs> he he doesn't have a crystal ball out, but uh, he can sure as hell give the slander like when the game's over for sure. Yeah, I'm not good at predicting. I've I've never been a good gambler, if you know my history. Not a good gambler. Uh, so what was the final on that one, Fernando, from game one? If you have that on you. Uh, that was eight to two. What I'll say about that game is Courtney said that she has a lot more confidence in Dylan Bundy lately, and it looks like he's more confident. Let's talk about Joe Adele. You mm. want to talk about confidence. 2021 Joe knows. Joe is going to be a problem. Mm-hmm. That grand Joe slam. Adele looks great. Yep, yep. Grand Slam was amazing. That Grand Slam was the icing on the cake. It was pretty. Um, you know, you guys have brought it up several times how Adele's swing has looked much better. He's more confident. He's taking more pitches. He's fast as hell. Um, you know, like today, um, just a quick spoiler alert, when he had a couple ground balls that should have been double plays, he legged them out. And, and you're seeing yep. that. That's exciting. You know, him and Marsh are, are super fast along with Otani. That's three big spe uh, speed demons on the bases. So and there, his defense has looked much better too, uh, dude. So. He almost threw. The, so he did throw a guy out at second, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then he almost threw in today's game, the Wednesday, uh, the Thursday game. He almost threw the guy out at second base trying to tag up. Yeah, it was a competitive play. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I mean he's he's got more accurate. He's playing much better. So yeah, I mean I'm very encouraged. Next year I think will be his breakout year. I think right now he's just getting his. Like we're starting to see him get hit more, you know, get, uh, but he's not trying to hit home runs, which is encouraging. And I think that'll come when his confidence comes up the more he gets hits. Yeah. yeah. I mean, home runs are cool. But. <laughs> home runs are fine, I guess. Um, I, but I think what he like, he plays his own game. Mm -hmm. um, you know, he knows that he's fast, so he can leg out, you know, something in the infield or at least, you know, try to not be a part of a double play. Um, so I think the fact that he's kind of sticking to his own game and not going for that launch angle, you mm -hmm. know, he's, he's confident in himself now. And I think that was something that he needed time to develop and, you know, it's been working. So I definitely have a little bit more confidence in him because I know I had a bunch of Joe Adele slander last year <laughs> and even the beginning of this year, I was not very confident in him. So I'll eat my words. I was wrong. I'm sorry. <laughs> Wait, Ooh. so a woman admitted she was wrong. Can we okay? I'm gonna save this and mark this. You need no, to save this. Yeah, never happened ever again. My Courtney, if your boyfriend's listening, he better he better, he better keep it in mind. I yeah. know I, I, she knows how to say sorry. She she'll claim she doesn't, but she does. Yeah, sorry is in my vocabulary not often, but it's in there. Ooh. Hey, she's a keeper if she's able to admit that, right? So <laughs> there you go. You there better you go. do your part, Courtney's boyfriend. Keeper. <laughs> What's his name? Can we start calling him by his name? Nick. His name Nick. is Nick. Okay, Nick. Okay. okay. All right, Nick. All right, Nick. <laughs> <laughs> so, so that was game one, a nice eight to two victory, grand slam. By Real quick, Adele. Todd, how do you feel about Joe Adele lately? I, I like it. I, I just think that his speed is going to help his game, uh, stretching singles into doubles, doubles into triples, uh, his fire. Like when he hit that grand slam and he was just like, fuck yeah, to the, to the bench. Like Courtney said, that's the excitement. That's the freaking celebration. That's the kind of stuff that we need that can bring more pep to their step. I love it. Yeah, yeah. We need, you know, that's the fire we've been lacking. Mm -hmm. You know, I think Joe Adele is a spark plug. Joe Adele right now reminds me of what Eric Young Jr. was for us in 2017. You know, I think Joe Adele has a lot more talent than Eric Young Jr., but the thing was that Eric Young Jr. was never projected to take the world by storm. Mm -hmm. For about two months when Mike Trout was out, Eric Young Jr. was Mike Trout. And I'm sure Angels fans remember that. He, you know, I don't know what if it was an act of God or what, but <laughs> like he, out of nowhere, he developed this level of talent that was larger than him. Yep. You know, Joe Adele is seemingly doing that now. He's starting to get to that point, but that's what we've always expected. He's always been a high athletic guy who had a high ceiling. So I'm just really happy to see it. Mm -hmm. All right. So okay, we'll next game. Oh right, yeah, we'll move on to game two. What happened in game two? Otani Day. That was Otani. Yeah, mm -hmm. Otani mm -hmm. Day. Uh, yeah. I mean, okay. So first, I don't know how you guys would have felt, but I honestly would have liked seeing Otani completing the game. I think he could have done it. 
and that's just me. Um, but I would have liked to see him complete the game or at least at least start the night, you know, and then if, you know, if he did get in a little bit of trouble, then we bring in Iglesias. But I think I would have wanted to have him go in the ninth inning. But I mean, other than that, I mean, he's our MVP. What else do we expect? Um, so, yeah. <laughs> okay, Fernando, what's the rebuttal to that? Because you, you're giving. I'm going down vote. I'm, I'm down vote. I, I don't agree. I mean, would it be a would it be fun to watch Otani go? Sure. I mean, complete games are cool, but it's also a stat that people don't really look at these days. If we're talking about a complete game shutout, different story. Give him the opportunity. But to me, there's a big difference between a complete game shutout and, you know, a completely different plan that's just a complete game. You know, complete games are cool and all, but, you know, at the end of the day, what's another inning? You know, another inning where you could potentially get hurt, another inning where, you know, anything could go wrong. You know, bring in myself for the save. It's not like they brought in Austin Warren. It's not like they brought in, you know, anybody. And even Austin Warren's fine. It's not like they brought in Jose Quintana. It's not like they brought in, you know, any of these other sketchy guys. They brought in Rysel Iglesias, who is the best closer we've had in a long time here at Anaheim. So personally, that's the move I think I would have made. I understand that it's, you know, sexy to have a complete game. But, you know, that's just I don't even know if we've had one this year because obviously the almost a no-hit bid by Sandoval, uh, I didn't agree with Madden yanking him still without giving up a run. Like Fernando said, he only gave the one hit and he yanked him, didn't allow him to finish. I thought that was Bush League. And then I'm 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 with either one of you. I was okay with if with Courtney if he closed it out or, or attempted to close it. And I'm also good with Fernando because uh, Rossiel just showed you again why Fernando said he's one of the best closers in baseball. He just came in there, one, two, three, game out. Uh, the problem I had, though, with Rossiel was not that game, was the game before. Uh, Madden, in a six-run lead, was warming up Rossiel, and he was not available for a game three because of that. So uh, yeah. I thought that was really stupid um, on Madden's part. But to go along with game two... Great pitching performance. And again, I brought this up in the post game. Remember earlier in the season, I mean, Otani can literally have about four or five more wins right now. But he messed around so much with that split finger pitch, using it as his main pitch. And if you're not close to the strike zone with that and you're missing consistently, you're going to have a lot of three ball, two counts. And he had so many pitches by the fourth or fifth inning, he was gone. So he never got those decisions most of the time. And so he got a, a ton of no decisions in the season. As he went away from the splitter, and the splitter went to less than 10% of his repertoire, his curveball, fastball, and sliders have just taken off, and his strikeouts are way up, his ERA's down, and his innings are, are going up as well. So question to you two is, is he a Cy Young capable? I don't know. I know. That's tough. I that's a tough one. I I know what he's doing is remarkable. Don't get me wrong. And I love the fact that we are seeing, you know, longer innings, more strikeouts and stuff. But I honestly just feel better having him as the MVP candidate instead of trying to go for the Cy Young. Because, um, I mean, what – don't get me wrong, a great pitcher, you know, I'm glad that he's finally found his groove. But what pitcher is also going to hit home runs? Like sure. I'm, that's just automatically MVP worthy, and not not even yeah. just home runs, but lead the league, not not lead the AL, lead the league in home runs. Well, let, let me oh. give you one more qu question to and add on to that real quick, and I'll let you guys both rebuttal on this. But as it stands, he's eight and one now. I yep. say he's going to get four to five more wins. So let's just say he gets he maxes out at thirteen and one, thirteen and two, to finish the season with about a two or two fifty or less ERA. And he His ERA right now is two seventy nine for reference. Yeah. Okay, yeah. okay, two seventy nine. So let's say he goes two fifty, something like that, and he hits over fifty home runs. Now I had this discussion with Halo Haven, and he was being stupid. He said that you don't take the whole resume into a Cy Young. It's happened before with with uh, MVPs on last place teams, and I think it could yeah. happen for a Cy Young. So, with that being said, he could get some extra votes because people are going to look at his hitting accomplishments, like Courtney said all those home runs. Let's just say he finishes with those numbers. Does that put him over a Lance Lynn who's dominating for the White Sox right now for Cy Young? Because if that's the case, he'll have a complete sweep. Courtney said he's going to win the MVP. I'm sure of it. He'll win a silver slugger. He'll win, he'll win a golden glove because of uh, 
fielding percentage, is the Cy Young really that up? Like, like, can he get it with those numbers? I, I think if he's in a situation like that, then maybe he might get more consideration just because the pure marketability of that. Mm-hmm. It's like, cool, Lance Lynn, no one gives a shit. But if it's like, <laughs> Sho- <laughs> if it's Shohei Otani, people are going to be like, people are going to lose their marbles. Yes. And people are going to be like, oh my God, Shohei Otani. You know, the global superstar, the global icon, Lance Lynn will be like a trivia question, like six years. <laughs> people, <laughs> yeah, who the fuck is Lance Lynn? Um, yeah, exactly. You know, Lance Lynn's a good pitcher. No disrespect to him, but yeah. <laughs> is Lance Lynn Shohei Otani? Nope. And here's the thing: if Shohei Otani doesn't have that start against the Yankees, let's just say his blister would have flared up, and we, we would have actually gotten lucky for once because <laughs> his blister would have flared up. We'd be having a discussion about a guy flirting with an ERA in the ones. Mm-hmm. You mm-hmm. know, he'd be like in the two point twos right now. He'd be flirting with the ones. Right now, where he's flirting, he's at uh, 2.79, like I said. So he's flirting with, you know, 2.5 right now. But yeah, I definitely think he is in the running for a Saya. So, you know, I definitely think he, he'll get some votes. Um, I think if he, if he does win the Saya and takes the MVP and takes a gold glove and he sweeps it, for whatever reason, Otani haters, or maybe even just MLB haters, will say that, oh, well, you know, it's just it's just because of this. Like, if he wins a Cy Young, well, oh, it's because he hit the home runs. It's not because of his pitching. Like, no. somebody will have something negative to say mm-hmm. about it, and most of the time it won't even be true. Most of the time it won't even be from people, you know, that really don't know baseball stats the way we do. But somebody will have something to say about it if he comes in and sweeps like that. Yeah. So... I can de- I can definitely see it happening. I'm not saying that it's not a possibility. I'm just saying that there's kind of pros and cons to having that sweep sometimes. True, true. All right, good answers right there. Because uh, I mean, I could definitely see it happening, and I could see the hate on on one side than the other part. Oh, yeah. it'll, it'll it'll probably go down as probably one of the most statistical. I know I can't say it right. The one of the best statistically. Things. Yes, there you go. Thank you. They're statistical. <laughs> Shut up! Leave me alone. I'm t- I'm tired. <laughs> but um, hey, this, no, you're good. I get be, it. <laughs> this could be one of the greatest seasons, uh, of all time for a for a player individually. So I mean, here's the thing. Here, here's basically like what I'll say last. If you guys want to add it, if you guys can. Right now, we're living in a situation where we are truly seeing the most talented baseball player to ever pick up a baseball bat, or a uh, or a mint. Mm-hmm. Or, yeah, yeah, or baseball glove. You guys, you know what I mean. We're in a situation where we aren't just seeing, you know, a guy who has talent that literally oozes out of his body. We are truly seeing a baseball god. If the baseball, the theoretical baseball gods were to create a baseball player, it would be Shohei Otani. The guy is, you know, we hear it all the time. The guy is literally a video game. It's an understatement. The guy is an MLB The Show character. It's crazy. He, you know, 40 home runs in ERA, you know, in the twos, he's probably going to get to 10 wins. I mean, there was a situation. I don't know if you remember, Todd. This is before Courtney joined the network. One of our very first questions of the day, does Otani have a better chance of getting 10 wins or 55 home runs? If you scroll back far enough on our timeline, you'll see almost every single person said he's not going to get 10 wins. He'll get to 55, though. He might get to both. Actually, he has a better chance of getting to 10 wins right now than 55 homers with the way he's been batting. But imagine if he does both. Wow. Dude, it's yeah, it's crazy. He's we are truly seeing a fairy tale unfold before our eyes. You know, everyone keeps talking about he's a Japanese Babe Ruth. It's time to stop that. Babe Ruth wasn't shit compared to what Shohei Otani is. Babe Ruth was facing a bunch of you know, drunk guys who are plumbers, you know, bartenders. These guys didn't have really a lick of baseball talent compared to what these guys who are currently playing have. Shoei Otani is, you know, a god. So that's what I have to say. That's true. But you also know, again, if he comes in and sweeps, you know, you know what they will say, right? Well, he didn't win a World Series. He didn't even make it to the postseason. 
And it, hey, 29 other teams didn't win the World Series. It's true. I Trust me, I get it. But I'm just saying, the rest of the baseball community, that's what, well, if he's so good, how come he can not take the team to the postseason? That, um, because we're not playing basketball. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but, you know, haters, haters are going to hate, you know, mm. be in their corner. I just know that that is going to be some of at least the team slander. It won't necessarily, no, won't, bleh, won't necessarily be team uh, Otani slander. It'll be team slander. And yeah. that's the part that sucks. Well, that's fine. Now we have two players, not, you know, we've been saying how Mike Trout hasn't been to the postseason, mm. but now we're also wasting Otani's prime seasons or prime years. So now we have two prime players that we are theoretically wasting. I've I mean, always hated that argument because, I mean, since with like the Dodgers, I mean, prior to last year, they didn't win anything. I mean, they're wasting Clayton Kershaw. Oh, well, we were making the playoffs. I'm like, cool, bro. Participation ribbons mean nothing. Yeah. yeah exactly. And, and if you want to blame anybody, blame this guy right here. That's the dude you got to blame. Uh, he's He's been the MVP of keeping us out of the playoffs. Um, but yeah, watch that video that Chase, that Chase yeah. sent us. There's a video called Argon Moreno, LA's Dark Angel of Anaheim. Mm -hmm. You guys, by urinating tree, you guys got to watch it. Well, we'll check that out. I didn't get a chance to see that. I was sleeping when you guys were po posting all that stuff. Um, but but to finish up the uh, conversation on Otani, uh, it was funny because last year, I think it was, uh, or it was a year before last, when we had Otani, I was like, man, if he gets like five wins and ten home runs, you know, I'll buy an Otani jersey. And he, and I remember arguing with my, my, my friend was like, hey, he ain't going to hit that, dude. He's going to hit like 10 home runs. He won't get no five wins. And that was like lowered per trick injections, you know, thinking that this two-way thing was just a fad. It wasn't going to last. And now they went all in. You know, they've gone all in to batting this guy number two, number one, number three. Uh, you know, he's pitching every five to six games, which we never thought he would. Uh, so <laughs> now it's a thing. Now we know he can do it. And now it's like, damn, we, we lowballed this dude, me and my friend. So, yeah. and I did buy an Otani Jersey, by the way, cause he did get those. Oh, numbers. there you go. So, yeah, so can you guys imagine a lineup? Oh, go ahead. Courtney. No, don't feel bad. So I actually have, I haven't showed you guys, but I'm actually collecting MLB jerseys. So I actually have 15 teams at the moment. Mm. And five you, guys, you guys show me your collection. I love collecting jerseys. I have a bunch. <laughs> But I, so I have five Angels jerseys. So I have, uh, so Trout obviously was my first one. Um, I have Fletcher, okay. uh, Walsh, and then I have an old school Angels uh, jersey. It doesn't have a number on it. Uh, but I was holding off on, a, on an Otani jersey because I felt like he just had to prove himself a little bit more, a little bit more to me. I was just like, I'm not, I'm not going to do, I'll, maybe I'll get a t shirt. I was like, I'll get an Otani shirt. You know, okay. just to say that I contributed. But finally, last month, I, and I almost wait. I they almost didn't have my size. I was about to be scared, but I finally got my Otani jersey. So I have been sporting that as of late. <laughs> nice, that's awesome. Uh, I was gonna say, can you guys imagine next year a world where um, knock on wood, everything's gonna go well? Fletcher, maybe Rendon batting second, a healthy Rendon with the hip surgery. Hopefully, it's a Max Stassi effect. He does well. Mm -hmm. uh, Trout, Otani, Walsh, you know, Joe Adele, so on, Max Stassi. Can you guys imagine a world where that's a lineup? Yeah, and that's not to mention who's going to be at shortstop. We don't know if it's, you know, it could be an upgrade. We can be getting Simeon. We could be getting uh, Seager. Who knows, man? That that lineup right there you just mentioned without a shortstop in it sounds No good. Seager. No Seager. <laughs> if people complaining about... Anthony Rendon cannot complain if we get uh, Corey Seager and he gets hurt in a week. It's just, you know. Okay, so if so if we're not having Seager, can you at least promise all the Angel fans that we will have uh, Suzuki back? <laughs> yes, yes. We're going to give Suzuki a four-year contract. Yes! How old he is. All right. Yeah. We're going to trade Max Stassi, too. Yeah, we don't need Stassi. Yeah, we, we have Kurt Suzuki. We have we have the meme god. Suzuki's the GOAT. <laughs> yeah. I'm leaving. We I'm not. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> All right. Now, the main attraction from this series was clearly today's game. Today's obviously Thursday the 19th, September oh, 4th. Oh, right, right. Real quick, before you go into that, I just want to say, that was Miggy's night. Should have hit the 500 home run, and Shohei stole the show. Pitching and hitting. That home run was godly. Awesome. Yeah. yeah. 40 home runs. Absolutely crazy. You got The meme I posted, I thought was hilarious. 
Yeah, that was great. It was like yeah. the heartbeat. Yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> Yeah, I, I now that I, I messed up, I should have used like the Vince McMahon meme where he's like, <laughs> "Oh yeah, yeah, he's spazzing out." That was that would have been good, but yeah, the heart one should have used that one. Yeah, but go ahead, same man. thing, same energy. <laughs> go ahead on the game three. All right, yeah. So game three. So you guys can check the timestamp, man. Rally, Chris. I so admittedly, I was the one who posted this one on my story. Mm-hmm. I showed my boss, and he was like, "You should post that." And I was like, why? I'm all, it's not even a rally situation. He's like, dude, it's not a, you guys aren't going to have a rally situation. Just post it. And almost immediately afterward, the angels are like, yeah, we're going to do this today. Today's the day. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if like somebody's like scrolling through Instagram and then they hear the, Wah! and they're like, yes, yes. <laughs> rally Chris said, let's go angels. Let's go angels. And like, maybe that was like the, you know, the defining force that made like Joe Adele or Brandon Marsh and all these young guys be oh. like, yes, we're going to do it. Oh, no. His power, he was hulking up. Cress was like, oh, I feel it. Dude. That was it. Hulk smash. <laughs> Rally Chris smash. Yeah, I mean, that was, uh, they should send thank you cards to Rally Chris. He but just, yeah, like, he brought us the win. You just see like Rally Chris in his house, just like, oh, like just yeah. getting so like hyped up for this. Like, yeah. <laughs> His family's like, stop ri- wrecking shit. He's like, I'm hooking up. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. Hey, but Rally Chris got us the W today. So we were down, was it 10 to 2 at some point? Mm-hmm. Yeah. What is yeah. with your face, bro? You're looking, you're about to take a dump. No, it's a, um, cramps. I'm cramping. I'm cramping. <laughs> oh, and I just feel like a, now I just feel like it's, a jerk. Oh. It's, that t- it's that time of the month. I got gas. Oh. Oh, oh man, I'm sorry, Todd. Now I feel like a jerk. I'm just like, why did you hear about a fart? Or did you pull the IL with Rendon? Yes, <laughs> yeah. Oh, LeBron couldn't handle the heat. Neither could Todd. She, she just, she just accused me of having a bleeding vagina. How dare you? How dare you? Yeah, Todd's out for the season. No more post games for you. Yeah, no, 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 no. It's like Todd is day to day, and then like next week we're like, okay, Todd is out for the year. Yeah, yeah. He's out for the year. See you next season, guys. It's bleeding vagina. Don't worry. Don't don't worry. Uh, Chase James and Rally Chris are going to trade off post game shows. There you go. <laughs> so yeah, so we were down ten to two at some point. That was the sixth inning. Like right at the start of the sixth, they were down ten to two. I don't care what anybody says. The TV ratings at that point must have been so low. Oh yeah. We're talking like people like switched it to like Price is Right. Days of Our Lives, Grey's Anatomy, something like that. Hell, people are watching I Love Lucy. <laughs> people are like, well, I should have just gone to school today. I don't know why I call that sick or yeah. work. Or they stopped <laughs> checking their phones like I did. I was like, eh. And I started getting these alerts. I'm like, hmm, what's going on here? Randy went to sleep. Yeah, Randy went to sleep. <laughs> And then, like, so I'm at work, and I, like, and I see MLB, and I'm just like, okay, you know, whatever. I see it's 10 to 2. I'm like, I'm just going to stop checking my phone. And then our group chat is going off and about how we suck. And mm-hmm. I'm just like, okay, yeah, I'm just going to turn this off. And I started doing some of my reports and stuff. And then all of a sudden, it just starts going, like, oh, you know, 10 to 4. Oh, 10 to 6. And I'm like, wait, what? I'm like, what's happening right now? Mm-hmm. <laughs> and all of a sudden. And then our Lord and Savior Max Stassi. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's a two-run bomb, and all of a sudden it's ten to eleven, and I'm just like, now we got a game, boys. Look at us! All of a sudden we want to play some goddamn baseball, and you know, not roll over and die. So it was great. Yeah, I mean, yeah. for for me, I I turned it off, and then uh, I I turned my phone back on when I got to a stop. And it was 10 to 6. And then, uh, I was about ready to turn off because of my aunt. Oh, Marsh is up. I don't know if he's going to do anything right here. Because uh, I saw earlier he was robbed of a homer. And uh, so when he hit that one to center field, I'm like, wait a minute, wait a minute. Oh, shit, that's a triple. And, you know, he went around. I I kind of was upset, though, when they didn't score him. I'm like, oh, they just wasted another yeah. opportunity. But uh, they, they kept plugging away. Like Courtney said, I mean, hit the home run. I mean, they came. that's a huge comeback, man. He got robbed multiple times this series. Yeah, he did. He Brandon did. Marsh has a, twice, I think, he got robbed. That should have been home runs. We should be talking about him having, like, two home runs for the year. And then in Texas, I think he should have had another one. 
Yeah. You know, like the deepest part of that park, and it would have been out of literally every other stadium. Like they they showed the over of the lap. Mm-hmm. Would have been out of like almost every other ballpark. And did you know that his swings, they're not power swings. He's just trying to get the barrel on the no. bat. So imagine when he actually does try and launch angle, which I don't want him to do for a while. But you've seen no. his average, though. It went from 148, it's up to almost 235. That's pretty awesome. It is 235 right now. Yeah. Joe Adele's average went down, though. He's down at 213. It's weird. I thought he was doing much better. But you know what? At the end of the day, I'm not looking at just average. He's having good constructive at bats. At the end of the day, that's what matters. Yeah, he's making productive outs and he's getting walks. Yeah, exactly. He doesn't look overmatched. Like I remember last year, like he did not belong at the major league. No disrespect nope. to Joe Adele, but he definitely looked out of sorts. He looked uncomfortable. He looked he wasn't ready. This year, he looks confident. You know, at the end of the day, as long as a player looks confident and has good at bats, hard to ask for much more. Pretty much, because last year, you're right, he was seeing four pitches and striking out. And this year, he's working counts. If he does strike out, it's three balls, two strikes. So yep. uh, I give him credit. You're right. He's he's doing much, much better. And his defense, like you, like we said earlier, his defense is literally we're night and day, you know, it, it's, freaking Neptune and Earth. Like we're... It, it's, it's weird, isn't it, that we have capable coaches in the minor leagues but don't have them on the major league staff. That's weird. Yeah. We're gonna sign Paul Serrano to a extension. Oh, jeez! He's the new manager. He's the only. He's the only. Uh, what is it? Uh, what is a coach on the sideline that can? He's so fat he can get his butt groove into wooden benches. You know what I yeah, mean? Right. He can, We're gonna fire Molina though, because oh. he's good. Yeah. He's good. <laughs> he's can't be here. Like yeah. you just can't do it. You cannot be here, sir. He's like, Madden's like, whoa, 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 wait, wait. You're trying to teach these guys something? Get the fuck off the team. Yeah. No, leave. <laughs> That's not yeah, what construct, Constructive stuff. I saw Todd Butcher did an interview today with uh, with his favorite coach of all time, Doug White, and I'm all. Oh. Doug, <laughs> Doug White's his favorite? That's what he said. Oh. Shout out to our boy, Ty Butcher, by the way. Ty, uh, you're, yeah. you're a real one. <laughs> he is, but uh, that's a little awkward because I've never heard of anyone else give any kind of credit to Doug White. I thought Rally Chris said, because I thought he was listening to that interview, I thought he said that Austinus was his favorite, Ty's favorite. Ty's favorite manager? Yeah. Maybe I read but that. But that's one. not a pitching coach. Doug White was his pitching right. coach. <laughs> Fired! 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 Oh my God. <laughs> Come on, the words of Vince McMahon. You're fine. <laughs> <laughs> I thought that was pretty good. I know he's like, yeah, all right. I gotta fire somebody. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah, but uh, yeah, no, great game, great game. You love to see it. Absolutely love to see it. You know, I don't know if it's true, but did you guys hear like the joke of like what Jose Quintana said after the game? Mm-mm. So there was like a joke that was posted, but like, like I said, I don't know if it was real or not. It said it was an interview, like a. a Photo of like his face during like a Zoom interview, and he said, um, "All good wins come from pitching." I was glad that I was able to keep my team in the game. <laughs> so if that was real, I commented on on our, as the Halos and Info Twitter, and I was all, <laughs> "It was that, just that." It that was that gift that can't be real. Because let me ask you guys this question: We've all you guys said it last show that both of you guys agree are in agreement. I'm in agreement with you. Let's ride the youth the rest of the way. Youth movement. Um, yes. We saw two retreads that gave up all 10 runs today. And that was Quintana and Slagers. Slagers. Quintana, yeah. yeah. And the rest of the Technically, bullpen, Slagers is young, though. Yeah, he's technically young, but I think he's old in the tooth as far as we know. What he, we, we know what we're getting from him. Austin Warren, we don't know because he's peaking already. He's doing really good. Wants is turning into a decent bullpen guy. And then Myers has resurged his career lately to where you might say, Hey, maybe we bring him back a little bit. I mean, maybe we add him to the road. I, I know. I know. I'm trying, I'm, I'm trying to be optimistic. I kind of like the there way we he's go. pitching lately, but, but yeah. do you guys think that this is a blowout for the angels? If Packy starts today? Oh, I don't know. We Packy's never started in a major league game, but I will say that at least Packy's going to go out there and be competitive. Jose Quintana is not competitive. You know, the Angels just really need to be careful with these one-year moves. The list is endless at this point of, like, people over the last, like, five, six years that have signed to a one-year deal who didn't pan out. Mm -hmm. The list of guys who did pan out 
is significantly shorter. I don't think any of the guys you did pin out were even signing. They were like waiver pickups. Yep. Yep. Like Parker Bridwell in 2017, he was a waiver pickup, but he was great. Yeah. You know, it's just. I think I. I think Packy should get a start for the high Packy. Uh, yeah. 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 <laughs> Hi, Packy. Um, I think Packy should get a start. I mean, you know, I. Why not keep writing out the youth? I mean, first of all. First of all, I didn't even know we still had sweaters. Like, I think when I seen that, and the, I was just like, what? I was like, what happened? Like, we still have him? Um, and first of all, seeing Quintana starting today, I was just like, well, this is an automatic loss. Like, <laughs> I, think, I think I already, in the predictions, I already counted today as a loss. And it wasn't, necessarily wasn't because of pitching, because we thought it was going to be standing mm-hmm. um, I It was supposed to be. Was, yeah, I just thought it was just going to be our bats being cold. After I seen Quintana, I was like, oh, no, this is – yeah, sure, this is a lot. Yeah. This is fine. This is the biggest L we're ever going to take. Um, <laughs> so – You were I, right for a while. Yeah, we almost had it. Uh, yeah. <laughs> had us in the first half, not going to lie. Yeah, had us in the first half. Um, but, yeah, I mean, Quintana needs to go. Um, Sluggers needs to go. But, yeah, I mean, I think that give Packy or one of the other young guys a start. I mean, it's – what do we have to lose at this point? I think I think we win this game today, maybe ten to five. If Packy starts, gives us five innings. I think he could have given up like four runs. He would have been okay. Uh, the Quintana dude looked like garbage, like you said, Slagers. And then the fact that we had Hoyt, I'm like, we have Hoyt, and I mean that's another dead weight guy we don't need. And there and there, there's there's Jan and someone else brought up in the um, uh, uh, the pagers Brian or some some another pitcher in AAA. It's pitching really good. Bring just bring all the youth up. Salt Lake's going nowhere. They're not going to make the playoffs. Uh, the Trash Pandas are are kind of good, but let's steal some guys. Let's bring them up and let's finish out August and September with some youth. Dude, our boy Dmac is killing it down for the Trash Pandas. Yeah, it's another guy. It's another guy killing it. I'm telling you, if the goose wasn't loose today, because sometimes the goose will go quiet for a little while, then he'll just have a breakout game like he did today. Yeah, the goose is filming out like commercials today. Yeah. If, if, <laughs> If the goose was really, really struggling, I'd be like, you know what, man? Who knows? Maybe McKinnon can come up as a utility guy at some point. Who knows? Yeah, dude, he is seeing the ball very well right now. Mm-hmm. I think the trash pandas have uh, the two highest RBI machines right now. I yeah. forgot what the other guy's name is. Something Wilson. Yeah. McKinnon yeah. and then like, Wilson, like the top two right now in double A. And I'm like, okay, well, we see you. Right. Artie's happy. He loves players who produce for little money. <laughs> he's all yeah he's yeah. all value value menu, value yeah. menu. yeah he's all, i love the four for four from wendy's <laughs> <laughs> he's all does it that makes come with, so full does that come with whiskey yeah. <laughs> had a little bit of spice like, there you go there you go yeah right he's such a drunk uh so you <laughs> so gotta if, be you gotta yeah. be to own this team <laughs> so a three game sweep uh we got we got past the tigers we're still kind of whatever in it we're now playing like courtney brought up earlier the bridgeport game coming up which is a finale of that cleveland series uh hopefully the weather stays good because they're saying there's a good chance of rain but those what do you guys think about those jerseys you seen those uh those those jerseys that they're gonna be wearing them honestly like i don't think they're that bad i actually like them better than the all-star jerseys yes yes i'm in full agreement what do you think fernando big big fan big dubs you know it's simple but it's good i'm a fan i think it's fire i would wear one myself Mm -hmm. i'm all in i'm all in i like them you know it's like inspired by the little league jersey so there's a little bit of a, a tick for the cap there but i you know it's like the perfect mix of like cool it's you know it's it's a little out there but it's i don't know i, I like it. i'm a fan uh, one one quick thing i want to say about that um the uh, kids little league game is i remember when the pirates were there a couple years back and mccutcheon was still on the team that that guy is such a kid favorite so many kids love that guy and i think he's like the same kind of way with trout if trout was there that's gonna be huge but imagine if trout was there with otani they would get the same kind of love because it was funny because I forget I even forget who the, the pirates were playing. All the kids wanted to be around McCutcheon because he had that smile, that that charisma, and and all the kids want to emulate his style of play. And what do we have on the Angels? 
McCutcheon like players that like Ota- everyone loves Otani. They want to emulate what he does, whether pitching or hitting. And then everyone loves Trout. So it would have been great for Trout to be there, but I um for the kids that are there, soak it in. Try to get as close as you can to Otani. I mean that's a generational type dude. And I think th- uh, the Field of Dreams game with what they did earlier with the White Sox and Yankees, this one with the uh, Little Leagues baseball, that that's what's going to get the younger kids involved in the game and also the fans. I think that's so cool. I think Adele and Marsh are going to absolutely shine that game. I don't know what Ooh. they're going to do, but I think those two guys are going to make the kids just fall in love with them. You know, they have that energy. They have that swagger. They have the talent. Mm-hmm. Right now, as you know, maybe their numbers aren't the flashiest, but at the end of the day, I don't care what your numbers look like if you help me win games. Absolutely. You know, like you said, you can have productive at bats and get out. And right, as of right now, those two guys are finding ways to be productive. They're playing really well together. They genuinely love being on the field together. And as of right now, that's a bromance that's really working. And as of right now, it's leading to wins. And you know, it's just it's just fun baseball to watch. Absolutely, Courtney. No, definitely. Um, I like the games that we've been kind of like incorporating into the season, the Little League game, the Field of Dreams game. I think they confirmed that Field of Dreams is going to be next year as well. Mm-hmm. Um, so I think those Cubs are Reds. Good. Yeah. So those are going to, those are really good games, you know, to help just broaden the sport, you know, and bring revenue to some of those cities. You know, I think the city of Iowa, that, you know, that small little town had a bunch of revenue. So it's yep. really helping a lot in, in a lot of different aspects, you know, not just the players themselves, but, you know, these cities, these states. Um, and then, yeah, it gives a chance, you know, the Little League team, the kids get to be with the athletes that they love, you know, mm-hmm. or potentially love. You know, they get to meet, they just get to meet an MLB player in general. Like how how yep. many people get to say that? Like it doesn't have doesn't necessarily have to be your favorite player, but I know I would tackle somebody just to get close to an MLB player. So, you Security, know, keep keep an eye on her at the games. <laughs> I will push someone. I don't care. <laughs> yeah, she pushes children too at Disneyland. Yeah, well, that's true. Yeah, kicks mascots. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but I definitely just soak it all up. I mean, you know, those opportunities really do only come once in a lifetime. Um, but I definitely think it's a great opportunity for kids and athletes alike. Well said, Fernando. So here's what I want to say to piggyback off of what she said. You guys can let me know what you guys agree or not. MLB this year, seemingly, we'll see how this little league game pan, uh, pans out, has done a decent job trying to appeal to the younger uh, demographic. Baseball has the biggest advantage over every single sport. They can put a field anywhere. At the end of the day, a football field is a football field. Doesn't matter if you're playing on the moon or on planet Earth. It's the same dimensions. It's the same everything. The only thing that changes is the stands, and nobody cares about that. You know, basketball, soccer, it's the same thing. Sure, could you put the field like on the beach or something? Sure, in theory. But at the end of the day, baseball has the biggest advantage because they can make different fields. They can make things fun. They can put a field up in, you know, the top of the mountains if they want. Yeah. And it's always going to be unique to that particular game. And baseball has the beauty to do that that no sport can. They can modify the field, and that is an official baseball field. You modify an NFL field, that is not an NFL field. It has to be 100 yards. You got to have 10-yard end zones. And same thing with every other sport. So – Baseball has to do a better job of, you know, having these fun environments, doing things differently, trying to appeal to the younger kids. And I think so far they're they're doing okay. I I have to agree. They're, they're, they're doing a a much better job because they're changing the rules too. They're trying to speed it up. Uh, There's going to be more rule changes in the off season. So, and then I'm hearing, I'm hearing too, that we now have a opportunity. They're going to vote on a hard salary cap where, Teams have to spend a hundred million dollars, so you can't be cheap, uh, and you can't go over a hundred and eighty million, which is significant considering the Dodgers are at three. So, uh, if that takes effect next year, watch for the purge in LA. So, yeah, hey, we gotta go after a couple of those players, but then we would have to shed some money too, I think. Uh, no, we're at 165 right now. Uh, when when okay. Pool Holes comes off the, the books, it'll be 130. And then um, if we could somehow dump Upton, 
with other expiring contracts will be about at 70. Yeah, I don't think the the salary cap would be that low, but I do think like maybe right with the luxury taxes, I do think they might make that the hard money, the, the hard cap. But I do think there needs to be a minimum. Like they do that in hockey mm -hmm. and every team has to make moves because it promotes parity. You know, maybe the Pirates are making many moves, but they have to spend $100 million or whatever it is. They have to have that payroll. So they have to spend a little bit. That would be cool because if you're like a decent player and the Pirates are like, damn, we need to sign someone to a, a fat contract to make the cap, I'd be like, hey, me right here. I need a contract. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Me, I like I'll take money. One year, $15 million right here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I like money. Yeah. <laughs> Exactly. So that's great. Um, just to piggyback off of what Fernando said about the field, um, I mean football. I'm I'm trying to learn football for my boyfriend. Nick is a football fan. He's a Steelers fan. Um, so you know, diehard. I know. I'm sorry. Bad <laughs> taste in teams, though. Wow. Bad pick, taste. Not me. I'm sorry. But <laughs> um, but you know, of course, I'm a diehard baseball fan. But even for him being a diehard football fan, the way he is, I never hear football fans saying like oh I want to visit every stadium like it's most of the time just their team you know yeah. or maybe yeah. a college team you know whatever with baseball fans or at least true baseball fans most of the time you hear us saying I need to go to every stadium at least visit mm -hmm. maybe not watch a game I want to watch a game at every stadium but at least go yeah. visit, go see it you know and I that that basically just brings that uniqueness to every field you know not every field is the same even for as trash as the Tampa Bay field is, I still went when I was living in Florida because, you know, they have the stingrays, you know, that's their thing. You know, it's the, an experience. It's an experience that you, you know, most of the time you only going to do it once, but mm. you, you get to see it. So, and I think putting a baseball field, you know, in Iowa, putting a baseball field anywhere is going to make it unique just on its own, no matter how it's built, no matter where it's at it's going to be in a new place. And I think that always adds to it. So I definitely think with those two games being added, um, it's, you know, definitely brought a lot of revenue, a lot of fans, and I hope we keep expanding it. There you go. And there's talk of maybe a Sandlot game I in know. the future, if not next year, the year after. So that would be another shining moment. I saw someone put on Twitter, they should do, they should uh, play a game where they played Moneyball. But they record a money ball. <laughs> oh, my God. I'm like, they already do it. Nobody goes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they're actually leaving that stadium at some point. Um, yeah, hey, but Dallas Braden says that Shohei Otani needs to leave Anaheim. Oh, geez. He's a former athletic pitcher. And I'm like, yes, he should play in a stadium where only 2,000 people who know how to play the kazoos. Exactly. Uh, oh, my God. Those And those damn yeah. wind chimes. The um, little the drums. Yeah, God pathetic hey um, Courtney wants thought about going I know I did I haven't been to Oakland and if they're leaving I want to be able to see them game once I mean that because Vegas is right there so it's I'll always go to that one but yeah I have one request if you do actually end up going to Oakland please take like a recorder you know the one you had to play in fifth grade <laughs> yeah. oh <my> <laughs> I'm not doing that. you can just you can sit there and play Mary had a little laugh Oh, what God. the hell? <laughs> Mary had a little love. <laughs> and no. at the end, go Angels. I know. Yeah. Go, go Halos. Like, <laughs> we're all looking I mean, aren't you guys so happy you guys learned how to play the recorder in fifth grade? Yeah, definitely. That's a life skill that I will take with me until I die. <laughs> I never yeah, I never yeah. went into band. Shocking. Never went into I didn't band. go to band either. They made me learn how to uh, play the recorder like a normal class. Oh, wow. oh, what I'll, school I did you go to? Band, so. <laughs> oh. We had a little like recital and everything. Hey, all I know is if the devil ever comes to California, I'm gonna get him with that reporter. Yeah, there you go. Oh, the, the devil came back to to California. He said, "You're pretty good, old son." Oh my god! <sighs> You've killed the there show twice tonight. That's no, kidding. <laughs> hey, that's all I do. That's what you're here. What I'm here for. <laughs> All right, so kidding, now with this kidding. Indian series, uh, I don't think the Indians have announced uh, any starters. Uh -huh. So uh, let's just say, what, two out of three or, you know, one out of three. What are you guys predicting here? I'll go two. Two out of three. three. Um, I'm actually going to go rally Chris on this one. I'm going to say a sweep. Ooh. 
Oh, oh. You know, you know me wrong, so I won't put too much stock into it. But yeah, don't. Yeah, I'm always wrong. But I'm gonna say, I'm gonna say a sweep. We're gonna get three in Cleveland. Yeah, little half turns. You were really aggressive with that. Is that your shirt where you look like you're pregnant? Yes, it is. <laughs> I'm not standing up, Courtney. So don't ask. Stand up. I want to see. I no. want to see how far along you are. No baby with bump. The, no. With the Todd Fox shirt. Are this is having, the Todd Fox one? Are we yes, having sir. a picture reveal? <laughs> I'm yeah. sorry. I hate you both. <laughs> That's fine. That's fine. I'm just kidding. It's just kidding. People are probably like, he wears the same angel shirt. I have like, it's it's a jersey. I have like five of these. <laughs> I I normally wear my like. I these are the ones I wear for pajamas. I'm wearing my pajamas already. But at least you're. I think this is. It's a Simmons. It's a Simmons uh uh spring training shirt. Oh, Simba. At least your I logo's know, in the right spot. <laughs> yeah, you can thank the guy behind you for that. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um. Yeah, well, one quick question. So you guys said two out of three. I, I called the rally, Chris, three out of three. Um, do you guys like the Guardians as a new name, or would you have oh. gone with the Spiders? The fuck? <laughs> that was the other name? Yeah. I mean, was the, the Spiders, was that that was linked to the Negro Leagues? Yes, it was. Mm -hmm. I thought so. Yeah, mm -hmm. and if that is the case, then I would have definitely gone with the Spiders. I think that would have been more of like a of a tip of the cap. Yes, you know, because yeah. I obviously I didn't get to watch the players of the Negro Leagues, but like all the highlights and all the stories and all the books I've read, those were some talented players. Mm -hmm. Like it's seemingly the talent back then was better than what the MLB had back yeah. in those days. Well, yeah, I, I definitely would have picked Spiders if, if that's the reasoning behind the name. Then yes, I will send Spiders. Like Guardians just reminds me of Guardians of the Galaxy. It it does. It doesn't make any sense. The logo's cheap. We've we've gone over that. Oh yeah, um, not bad look. When we talked about the Hall of Fame before, there's a wing for the Negro Leagues in general because their stats were comparable or in some cases better than better. the major leagues at the time. And unfortunately, because of racism, they weren't integrated into the game. That would have changed the game even earlier than Jackie Robinson. But my thing is too, like I'm with. Uh, uh, Fernando on that like some teams have won I think Seattle had won, worn their uh, Negro Leagues jersey earlier in the year look fire Kansas City's done it before because they had a famous team back in the day um, yeah. why not the Spiders that would have been not just hey let's bust out a jersey on a Sunday to honor them this would have been an all year thing it would have been good for the game it teaches history I mean look I'm on the side of wanting to keep the Indians there because it was named after a Native American but hey if you have to change a name what better than to be honoring a Negro League and then also the Spiders? Again, that's teaching you as they play. So yeah. <laughs> I don't know why baseball failed. Like Fernando was pointing out, hey, baseball's made a lot of good accomplishments this year. Well, here's one of their failures. <laughs> yeah, I understood like the name change with the NFL, like with the Redskins. It's like, okay, I get that. Yeah. You know, I, I understand that's maybe a little outdated. Mm -hmm. But like the Indians, you know, I, I never really understood why they had to change that one. I understood why they took Chief Wahoo off. That was racist. Yeah, the smile, yeah. <laughs> yeah, Chief Wahoo was a little much. Mm -hmm. But, um, yeah, the name itself, you know, I, granted, I'm not Native American, so I'm going to keep my hand out of that cookie jar. That's not, you know, my place to say. But, you know, I, I, I never understood that reasoning. But, you know, what is what it is. At the end of the day, I don't mind the name The Guardians. But, yeah, that logo, trash. Mm -hmm. Dumpster fire. Exactly. You, you have anything <laughs> to add on that one, Courtney, or? Nope, dumpster fire. Got it. All right. So we got anything else for this this show besides my pregnant shirt? I'm going to bed. I'm going to bed. Yeah, yeah I'm going to go to bed too. <laughs> March 1.30 a.m. over here on the East Coast, fam. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so let's, let's wrap it up real quick. You can find this show anywhere you listen to podcasts. Just check in with Halos in the Infield on uh, Google, and you'll find us there. You also go to Redbubble. You find all the Five great stars. merchandise. That you have, oh yeah, leave five star on the podcast. Five, five stars, or hell, if you want to leave one star, that you get, that some people have been doing that miraculous, that mysteriously don't put reviews. Mm -hmm. Right? Why it's a one star show? I don't care if it is. Give me a reason why. Yeah, maybe we can improve. Who knows? Maybe. Yeah, you say Fernando's trash of time, but tell me why. <laughs> one star, you 
fucking trash ass pandas. I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> wow, that's why. And if you like like designs like this, like my cell phone right here, that's a sunset collection. I'm telling you, that's fire. Randy came up with this. Or your shirt. Awesome. You, no, I don't well. Stop it. I'm not you almost tricked me there, punk. <laughs> <laughs> we fixed the shirts. We yes, built the Disney collection. We did we yes. did the Disney logo that Randy. Thank you, Randy. I feel like this collection was made for me. Um <laughs> <laughs> let me just say this: the Disney collection automatically our bestseller like mm -hmm. it the halo's blow pen i think was still the number one seller mm -hmm. i woke up and the disney collection blew up there was like six or eight shirts that we sold within the span of like three to like six hours because the press 20 and 30 year olds love disney i'm yes. one of them <laughs> And, and, and you know what I'm telling you? It's it's something that if you live in this area, anywhere close or growing up as a kid, obviously Disney mesmerizes you. He captured the angel's essence and the Disneyland essence with some palm trees for SoCal love too. I mean, it was an awesome logo. He also came up with a one with the banners of the two or 2002 uh, banner of World Series, Halos in the infield. Look Disney-esque as well with the, all the titles of the division championships. Really nice logos. Those are nice designs. The sunset, like I showed you, and other ones that we got. Randy's just been killing it. I hope that whoever designs our city, uh, city to city on one or whatever that's called. City or, Connect jerseys. Yeah, City Connect. Jeez. Oh, Whatever. They come up with a good logo because San Francisco to me was kind of lame. It was kind of re very basic. Dodgers. Nobody's are... more basic than the Dodgers. Yeah, that one's super basic. Bottom of the barrel. Yeah, I'm hoping the Angels do something like what Randy did because or hire Randy to do it because, damn. Yeah. That's an awesome yeah, He's ours, though. You can borrow him maybe for a project, but he's ours. You have to pay a finder's fee or, or you have to pay us for the finder's fee, basically. <laughs> yeah, that's fine. He's for sale. That's fine. <laughs> We love Randy, but he's for everyone has a price. Oh jeez. <laughs> wow. We want to keep He's you, a Randy. WWE fan, he'd get it. Everybody has a price. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> Ted DBLC. So any final thoughts before we get out of here, ladies and gentlemen? Peace, good night. <laughs> oh no. Good night, guys. <laughs> Bye. Good night, fudge sticks. <laughs> fudge sticks.